The age-old question. What has more caffeine, a dark roast or a light roast? Recently, I posted a YouTube short saying this. If you take the same green coffee bean and roast it as a dark roast and a light roast, they will have close to identical caffeine levels. I got a few comments telling me otherwise, and it really made me interested in the depths of myths and misinformation surrounding the seemingly simple question. After hours of reading through these papers, experiments, and studies, I've come to an answer that covers all bases. Third wave light and dark roast coffees have the same caffeine levels. Dark roasts with the first and second wave methodologies roasted beyond 235 degrees Celsius will have less caffeine. It's not a clear-cut answer, so let me shed some light on the misconceptions that come up and break them down through science and reasoning. All the papers and research will be linked below. Let's first lay the foundation with some knowledge about caffeine. Since we're talking about caffeine, we need to learn a bit about it. The main thing you need to know is that caffeine is thermostable up until it reaches 235 degrees Celsius. Above the 235 degrees Celsius temperature point, the caffeine compound breaks down and starts evaporating. Let's look at when we reach beyond the 235 degrees Celsius point in a standard roasting temperature spectrum. The spectrum goes from room temperature, which is the green beans before putting it into the roaster, up to 245 degrees Celsius. So we do get into high enough heat with dark roasts where caffeine starts to break down. So let's see these roasted beans beyond the 235 Celsius mark. I'm going to show you a couple of images here of roast level and their temperatures. Looking at the dark roasts that go beyond the 235 degrees Celsius point, this style of roast level was popular in the first and second wave of coffee. These days, third wave speciality coffee roasters usually don't go further than this type of dark roast because they want to emphasize the natural flavors of the coffee bean instead of the charred, burnt, and smoky tasting notes you would get from an old-school dark roast. Now let's jump into some flawed reasoning that has led to so much confusion around this simple question. When beans reach a specific roast level, they experience something called a crack. In roasting, the first crack usually indicates where a light roast begins, and the second crack indicates where a dark roast begins. What's important here is that the crack expands the bean, making it larger in volume. Kicking Horse found that dark roasts lose around the weight of 90 beans per pound. Since we know that caffeine is thermostable and doesn't leave the bean, this loss is accounted for when measuring the bean's moisture content. So why is this important? Well, density and expansion brings us to two different camps. Before talking about those two camps, if you like content like this, where I really break down coffee knowledge and look at it from a different perspective, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe even support by joining my Patreon. Now back to those two camps. If you measure by weight, dark roasts will have more caffeine because they are less dense, leading to more beans per gram. If you measure by volume, like a scoop, light roasts will have more caffeine because they are smaller in size, leading to more beans per scoop. So the way you measure out your beans determines if you get more or less caffeine in your brew. There will be around a 4 bean difference when you brew with 20 grams of coffee, so the impact is pretty minuscule. If you have OCD and measure your brews by the number of beans, both light and dark roasts will have the same amount of caffeine. Caffeine tastes bitter, but how much of the bitterness in your cup of coffee comes from caffeine? It is said that around 15% of the bitterness comes from caffeine. The remaining 85% comes from the roast level and extraction of the coffee. So even though some people swear by the buzz with the dark roast, it has the same amount of caffeine. Different bean varietals have different caffeine levels. Robusta beans that are commonly roasted on the darker side have around 30% more caffeine than Arabica beans. 
So when comparing roast levels and caffeine, make sure that the same green coffee bean is being roasted for both samples to get a good apples to apples comparison. But Paul, you say, this research paper noted a change in caffeine content with darker or lighter roasts. I've looked through many research papers on this topic. Researchers love pushing variables to the extreme breaking points, so it's crucial to scrutinize the methods of experimentation. Here's an example that notes a 60% lower caffeine level at darker roasts. Their experiment parameters use a 25 minute roasting time for three roast levels with varying heat. If you don't have coffee roasting knowledge, these parameters might sound okay, but there are some red flags with the roasting process to a seasoned roaster. Keeping roasting duration locked at 25 minutes while only changing temperature might lead to a visually great looking bean, but that is where the positives end. And this is where the issue lies with the samples. None of them would produce a pleasing and drinkable cup of coffee. So make sure to not take a research paper's conclusion at face value. Really look at them from a critical coffee eye. Here is a study looking at the different compounds in coffee as roast levels change in both Arabica and Robusta beans. Their roasting parameters were reasonable, the amount of samples were plentiful, and the study was cohesive and solid. They noted that caffeine was thermostable and didn't see any significant difference throughout the whole roasting process between light and dark roast levels. Explaining this graph, the y-axis shows caffeine in grams per 100 grams of coffee. On the x-axis, you have the color of the roast level measured in its index of reflectance value. A higher value means more light reflected, which equals a lighter roast. A lower value equals less light reflected, which equals a darker roast. I said the conclusion once in the beginning, but I'll repeat it here again. Third wave light and dark roast coffees have the same caffeine levels. Dark roasts with the first and second wave methodologies roasted beyond 235 degrees Celsius will have less caffeine. If you have a study that debunks this conclusion, then please link me down below in the comment section. I'm more than willing to have my mind changed with credible and solid research. Hopefully this has shed some light on a slightly darkened room labeled caffeine and roast levels. I'll see you in the next video.